Today we're going to evaluate an interesting integral from the 2023 MIT Integration B regular season 14. So that's a lot of modifiers to the MIT Integration B. So that's pretty interesting. There must be a lot of problems. And then we're going to use a couple of like well-known tools along our path. The first is the sum of the first n squares equals n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. The next is the sum of the first n cubes is n squared times n plus 1 squared over 4. And then next is the floor function or the greatest integer function. You can think of this as like an elevator downstairs to the closest integer. So three and a half would take the elevator downstairs to three. The floor of three and a half would be three and so on and so forth. This is the greatest integer less than or equal to x. And then there's kind of a dual function, which is the ceiling function. And that's the least integer greater than or equal to x. So that's like a elevator upstairs. Okay, so the goal here is to determine the value of the integral from zero to 100 of the floor of x times x times the ceiling of x. And like I said, we're gonna evaluate this two ways. One which is like a little bit longer, but does give a lot of illustrations for some nice techniques. And the other one which will use a bit of a trick. So the first one will be the longer one. So let's notice that this floor function and the ceiling function are both essentially piecewise functions that are constants on intervals with endpoints that are consecutive integers. So that's what we'll do. We'll break this up into those types of pieces. Okay, so this will be the sum as n goes from zero up to 99 of the integral from n to n plus one of the floor of x times x times the ceiling of x dx. So I haven't applied anything about the floor or the ceiling yet. I've just broken this up into pieces. Notice my first integral goes from zero to one, my second from one to two, my third from three to four, and then my 99th will go from, or I guess it's my hundredth because I start counting at zero, it goes from 99 to 100. Okay, but now let's notice that if x is between n and n plus one, then the floor of x is exactly equal to n because that's where the elevator will go. It will go downstairs to n. That's of course except at the end point, which is n plus one, but that's like negligible because that's just a single point versus like the whole half open interval up to that. And then similarly, the ceiling function will give us the top bound of integration n plus one. Okay, so those are constants with respect to the integral so we can pull them out. We have the integral from, or we have the sum from zero to 99 of n times n plus one times the integral from n to n plus one of x d, dx. Now, that's a fairly easy integral to evaluate. We can take the antiderivative and plug in the endpoints. So just bringing some stuff over, we have that sum, and then we have the n times n plus one, and then we'll have x squared over two evaluated from n to n plus one. And now let's do a little bit of a side calculation here to figure out that x squared evaluated at those two places. That will give us n plus one squared minus n squared, which is n squared plus two n plus one minus n squared, which is equal to two n plus one. Okay, so let's see what we really have. I'll maybe bring this half out and then I'll have the sum as n goes from zero up to 99 of n times n plus one times two n plus one. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool, but let's notice that that's exactly what we have right here in the numerator. So maybe we'll build this denominator up to a six, and we can do that if we multiply the outside by three. Notice I've just rewritten one half as three over six. Okay, and now here's where we're doing things maybe not as efficiently as we could, just for illustrative purposes. Now let's take this thing inside the sum and rewrite it as a sum itself. 
So here we'll have three, and then we've got this sum, n goes from zero to 99, and then the sum as m goes from zero to n of m squared. Because the sum of the first m squares is exactly this, if we throw on a zero squared, of course. And now we're gonna change the order of summation. And to help us do that, let's look at the following diagram. So let's say maybe this vertical axis is the m axis and this horizontal axis is the n axis. And then I'll just put some dots here to represent what we're doing. So notice we need to eventually sum m from one to 99, but I'll just put like five dots like that. And then we sum m from zero to n. So if n is equal to one, we just sum m from zero to one. In other words, just m equals one. We can actually like disregard this bit right here and just sum from m equals one. Actually, for both of these, given that the m equals zero and the n equals zero case are simply zero. Okay, and now notice if n is equal to two, then we sum m from one to two. So that means we need to sum along this dot as well. And then if n is equal to three, we sum m going from one to three, so that would be this dot and this dot. Now I think you can see where we're going. We're summing along this triangle. Now just like pretend that this ends at 99. Okay, so, but if we wanna sum the n values on the inside and the n values on the outside, then we need to write this a little bit differently. So we'll have three, and then on the outside, we'll have the sum as m goes from one to 99. And then on the inside, we'll have the sum as n goes from m to 99 because if we're summing the ends first, we start here and we sum across like this. Start here and sum across like that. Start there, sum across like that. So that's what's going in this sum that I'm underlining in red versus what happened in this sum which I'm underlining in blue where we always started at one and summed up. So notice we're summing over all of the same things. We're just doing it in a different order. Okay, and then we've still got this m squared in here. Okay, but now let's notice that this inner sum only depends on n. m is like a constant. So that means this inner sum is quite easy here. This is gonna be three. And then the sum as m goes from one to 99 of m squared, and then 99 minus m plus one, because that's how many numbers there are here. You take the numbers from m to 99, but that counts the bottom one as the zeroth one. So that would be like 99 minus m plus one. In other words, 100 minus m, like that. And now we can smush this together a little bit and we'll have 300 times the sum as m goes from one to 99 of m squared and then minus three times the sum as m goes from one to 99 of m cubed. And then from there, all we need to do is plug in these two formulas and we'll end up with the following number. So this is just arithmetic from this point, but what we end up with is 24,997,500. And that's the final answer. Okay, so now that we've done it this long, but I think illustrative way, let's do it a shorter way with a trick. Do you love what my team and I do to produce free math content? Then you should join the Patreon. For just $5 per month, about the cost of a cup of coffee, you can get ad-free versions of every video, access to the live seminar series, and more. Plus, you'll be helping keep the second channel, Math Major, where I post full courses on topics ad-free. If you're feeling extra generous, $10 a month gets you everything at the $5 level, plus you also get your name in the end credits of every video. We appreciate any support, but we ask you only join if you're financially secure enough to do so comfortably. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you there. Now we're going to look at this a slightly different way, although the first couple of steps are the same. So at this stage, I'll take this integral, which is left over, and I'll do a change of variables. So the change of variables I would like to do will be to set x equal to t plus n. 
And notice that means that dx is equal to dt because n is a constant. When x is equal to n, that tells us that t is equal to zero. Whereas when x is equal to n plus one, that tells us that t is equal to one. And now plugging this all into our given integral will give us the following setup. We have this sum as n goes from zero to 99. We still have this n times n plus one. But now we'll have the integral from zero to one and that integral which we can split up. And I think it's gonna be advantageous to split this up. So that splits up into the integral from zero to one of t dt plus the integral from zero to one of n dt where that n is just a constant. So that's gonna give us a half for this integral from zero to one dt and then plus n over two. And now we can distribute this sum onto both of those and split them up. So let's see, onto the half will give us the sum as n goes from zero to 99 of n times n plus one over two. And then onto the n over two will give us plus the sum as n goes from zero to 99 of n squared times n plus one over two. But now let's see, we've got a greatest common factor in both of these sums. We've got an n times an n plus one, we have an n times an n plus one there as well. So we can push these together and factor that greatest common factor out. Maybe we'll factor the half out too. That leaves us with the sum as n goes from zero to 99, n times n plus one over two. And then what's left here is an n, what's left here is a one. So all in all, what's left over is an n plus one. So we might as well write that as n plus one squared. But now let's maybe put those together into an n plus one over two, and then we can insert that into this thing that has the yellow overline. But that's gonna combine with the n plus one that's already there. Let's bring the half out, and now we'll have the sum as n goes from zero to 99 of n times n plus one squared. Okay. Now, what should we do from here? Well, I think we could maybe re-index this sum to make the squared part the simpler part. So let's replace all of the n's with n minus ones. So that's gonna change my starting point from zero to one. That's gonna give me a one half, and then I'll have the sum as n goes from one up to 100, because it changes my ending point as well. And then I have n minus one times n squared. Or in other words, I have one half, and then the sum as n goes from one to 100 of n cubed, minus n squared. And now it's the same sort of game that we had before, but with quite a bit less work, and you'll end up with this same solution that we had before. So I won't even write that again, we just have the same thing. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.